The Galapagos Islands became famous due to Charles Darwin's visit there in 1835 and its role in developing the theory of evolution as set out in The Origin of Species. We flew from Quito to the airport on Vulture Island in the Galapagos. We were fortunate to find a cruise boat to mesh with our schedule, since the boat that we had booked on many months ago sank, leaving us high and dry. The Ana Maria and the other tourist boats follow a set circuit determined by the park administration to ensure that the tourists from the 90 or so tour boat do not saturate a single area. There were eight other boats on our circuit. Our route over eight days took us from Balter Harbor to the islands of Santa Cruz, South Plaza, Santa Fe, Espanola, Floriana, Rabida, Santiago, North Seymour and finally back to Balter Harbor. After transferring from Baltra Airport to the harbor, we boarded the Ada Maria, raised anchor, and then made a short transit to Labacas Beach on Santa Cruz Island while we had lunch. Labacas Beach was our first real encounter with the animals of the Galapagos Islands, and it was exciting to see that they did not run away from us. Rather, they stayed in place to be photographed and studied. Labacas Beach is host to a sea turtle nesting area, and the turtle tracks look fresh. South Plaza is a small island off the east coast of Santa Cruz Island. Despite its small size, it is home to a large number of species and it is famous for its colorful shoreline purse lane. The bachelor pad is an area at the end of the island on top of steep cliffs where non-dominant male sea lions rest up and plot how to overthrow the dominant male. At our landing site on Santa Fe, we were retreated to a noisy welcome by the local sea lion colony. One of Santa Fe's feature attractions is a towering forest of giant cacti where we were lucky enough to see an elusive Galapagos snake. We snorkeled along the shore and encountered curious young sea lions that whizzed around us. This was certainly a highlight. We made an overnight crossing from Santa Fe to Espanola Island. As we approached Espanola Island in the very early morning, a humpback whale was breaching in the distance. Espanola was the most magical of the islands that we visited, as a wide variety of animals lived there with little human interference. We were blessed to see a wide variety of fauna up close, including sea lions with their pups, the intriguing blue-footed boobies nesting, courting and nesting waved albatrosses, marine iguanas in droves, the mass Nazca boobies, the well-camouflaged lava heron, the beautiful white long-tailed tropic bird, and the majestic Galapagos hawk.
Some of the marine iguanas had picked up beautiful colors because of their diet. Leaving Suarez Point, we moved on to Gardner Bay on Espanola for a beach visit. There was a big bull sea lion beach master on the beach lording over his harem. The size of this beach master was truly impressive. We spent the evening off Espanola Island where we witnessed a wonderful sunset. During the night we sailed to Floriana Island and anchored in Post Office Bay. Post Office Bay on Floriana Island is famous for its post barrel. In 1793 British navigators put a large wooden barrel here in hopes that home going vessels would take their mail with them. Obviously the barrel has been replaced several times but the tradition continues and the visitors can leave a postcard or take one for their home area. We sailed along the island until we arrived at Devil's Crown, a submarine crater noted for its snorkeling. The snorkeling was easy as we could drift through the crater with a strong current. As we entered the crater we could see a shark cruising some 20 feet beneath us. The crater walls were alive with fishes and there were some underwater caves and tunnels to investigate. As we were finishing snorkeling, a curious sea lion came up to have a look at us. We moved on to Pointe Cormorant where we watched Galapagos sharks swimming around our boat. Once ashore, we followed a footpath to a lagoon behind the beach that is inhabited by a number of pink flamingos who are busy stirring up the mud on the bottom for feeding. At the end of the trail, we arrived at Carolina Beach where there were numerous stingrays covered with sand that were swimming along. Once back aboard, we set sail and made the four and a half hour crossing to Porto Aora, where a number of the crew, including our guide, lived. Porto Aora is a busy harbor due to the number of tourist boats and resupply vessels from the mainland. The Charles Darwin Research Station has a breeding program for giant tortoises, hence it is an excellent place to see a wide variety of tortoises up close. There are pens of tortoises ranging in size from tiny to giant. We saw Lonesome George, the last of the Pinta Island tortoises who is now dead. Most of the buildings in Puerto Aora are pedestrian, but there are some very nice and interesting ones to be seen. The highlight of the port was the fish market along the water's edge. This fish market was very interesting since sea lions and brown pelicans calmly wait at the tables for the scraps. We went up country to the area of the Highlands National Park Tortoise Reserve. As we drove up higher and higher into the highlands, the vegetation became lusher and lusher due to the increased precipitation. The most surprising thing about the giant tortoises, apart from their size, was the wide and distinct track that they made through the tall grass. Since the tortoises are so heavy and their ground clearance is so low, they flatten the vegetation as they pass over it. This reminded me of tanks moving across the terrain. Adult Galapagos tortoises can weigh between 100 and 600 pounds and measure between 4 and 5 feet across the curvature of their shell. They can live for more than 150 years, which is one of the longest lifespans in all vertebrates. There are some 10,000 to 15,000 Galapagos tortoises in the wild, most of them on Isabella Island. The size of the tortoises was obvious when I climbed into a shell. We sailed from Puerto Aora to Rabida Island and arrived in a sheltered bay early in the morning in time for a beautiful sunrise. When we landed on Rabida Island there was a large bull sea lion patrolling as a beach master. Along the beach there was a pair of hungry Galapagos brown pelican chicks with their big mouths agape. 
Off Rabida Island, we saw Audubon Shearwater spectacularly diving for fish. A flock would synchronously dive bomb the fish and then pop up to the surface like corks. Leaving Rabida, we sailed to James Bay on Santiago Island. After an excellent lunch of fish, we went snorkeling near a Galapagos penguin and were excited to see a stingray, but this excitement was surpassed when we came upon a beautiful big hawksbill sea turtle feeding on algae on the rocks surrounded by little fish feeding on the scraps. Following the arrival of the horde of tourists from the big ship Polaris, we set off on our walk along the lava coastline where we saw a sea turtle pass under the lava bridge that we were standing on. We had an excellent view of a marine iguana easily swimming along the ocean and then scrambling out on the lava rock shoreline. We came upon a mother Galapagos fur seal with her newborn pup and the fresh placenta alongside them. A lizard was feasting on the placenta. Through the evening we cruised along to Sullivan Bay on Santa Cruz Island. The passengers relaxed as we cruised along. Late in the evening, we finally dropped anchor in Sullivan Bay with Santa Cruz Island in front of us and Bartholomew Island on our left. Following an early morning boat trip around the base of Bartholomew Island, we went ashore on Bartholomew Island to climb up some 360 steps to its highest point to see one of the most photographic vistas in the Galapagos Archipelago out over Pinnacle Rock. We snorkeled around the base of Bartholomew Island and encountered some penguins up close. We visited the huge early 20th century lava flow at Sullivan Bay and then spent some time on its nice frontal beach for a final snorkel. As we sailed towards North Seymour Island, the frigate birds flew in magnificent formation over top of the Ada Maria. In the morning after an early breakfast, we disembarked for an hour on North Seymour Island, our last stop of our voyage. Here we saw the iconic male frigate birds puff up their inflatable red-colored throgula pouches, which they inflate to attract females during mating season. The mating was obviously successful as there were both frigate birds and blue-footed booby chicks to be seen. We made our final return to the Ada Maria and then made the too short trip to Baltra Harbor where we bid adieu to the crew and went ashore. We took a group photograph while watching with great envy as our places on the Ada Maria were filled with replacements. As part of visiting the Galapagos we stayed in Quito, the capital of Ecuador. The Teleferico offers a great view over Quito since it takes one up about 3,600 feet above the city. The Basilica del Voto Nacional has gargoyles in the shape of animals found in the Galapagos. It also has luminous stained glass windows. The Jesuit church known as La Campagna de Jesu was having its stunning gilding renewed. We went to the Plaza Grande to see the impressive changing of the guard ceremony by the Guard of Honor at the Presidential Palace. Before the ceremony started, the plaza had several groups of protesters who were being watched from the palace by a man in a gray uniform.
Before the ceremony started, we walked by soldiers who were preparing and saw a Lancer in a period uniform from 1829 talking on his cell phone. Surely an anachronism. The ceremony was full measure with a band, marching soldiers and mounted Lancers. The Church of San Francisco has images of the sun which were used to connect indigenous people with Christianity. The Madonna on El Panicillo was the site to a temple of the sun in pre-Spanish times. It affords an excellent view over Quito's landscape. We made the short drive from Quito to the equator. After the mandatory photo at the large official monument, we went to the nearby solar museum, which claims to be actually on the equator unlike the official monument. The solar museum had an eclectic collection, including displays about the indigenous peoples of Ecuador. This museum was very well done and very entertaining given the hands-on nature of its exhibits. The museum ran faux experiments to demonstrate that due to the Coriolis force, water drains counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere versus draining clockwise in the southern hemisphere. We left Quito for Peru and the Inca Trail. Take me somewhere nice To some tired island in your heart cold. 